the next three weeks is going to decide the election. This is, the, this is going to be the closest day. It was 6,000 votes in the last election. It's going to come down to a few thousand votes. You know, Barack Obama grew up as a, as a community organizer, and he has based this entire campaign around field organizing. You know, before he had any money, before anybody knew who he was, we were sending out small groups of people into the communities and talking with them. This is exactly the way the Democratic Party was created in this country. You know, when the Irish and the Italians and the other immigrants came into this country, uh, you know, in the middle of the last century, and there were signs everywhere that said, no Irish need apply, and what they did was they started organizing, and they said, we don't have to take this crap because we can vote and there's more of us than there are of them and they started going around to the bars and to the you know and to the uh, weenie roasts on Sunday afternoon and they would meet people going into work and they would write down their names and they would convince them to vote for the same person and after 30 years they elected in the city of Boston the first Irish Catholic in the history of that city and that movement was occurring all up and down the eastern seaboard and those people became what we now know as the Democratic Party and this party has fallen away from its roots over the last 40 years. And we have allowed the Republican Party to steal from us our birthright as Americans. If I had come here eight years ago and told you that we would be at war and that our prisoners of war, American prisoners, would be taken down into darkened rooms and had plastic wrap stuffed into their throats and been suffocated with water, you would have dismissed me as a lunatic. You would say that is not possible in the United States. If I had told you that the guy who sits at my father's desk in the Justice Department would be signing off on, on wiretaps without showing it to a judge, you would not have believed me. You listen to these Republicans say they're going to cut your taxes, and then they add a trillion dollars to the national debt in a single day. They add another trillion dollars for this war, which should have never been fought. And I promise you, they may not say that's a tax, but your children and grandchildren are going to be paying off that debt by paying their taxes year after year. That's right. Yeah. And when you talk now in this state, we've been polite in New Mexico for far too long. You put it to them. If somebody says they're voting for John McCain, they are, they are perpetuating and creating this world which steals our birthright as Americans. You know, my dad was really good friends with this boxer named Jose Torres. Does anybody know who Jose was? Anyway, he was the smartest boxer who ever lived, and he only lost one fight. And he fought this fight against Emil Griffith, who was the toughest boxer. He killed someone in the ring. And they fought again, and everybody made fun of Emil because he was bigger, and he, was, he had a longer reach. And they said, Emil, he beat you because he's smarter than you. And Emil Griffith watched all his films, and they had a rematch in Madison Square Garden, and... Uh, uh, Jose Torres was beaten terribly and he kept getting back up and he, he was in the eighth round they had to cut both of his eyes open with a razor because they were swollen so much and and his face was you know it was looked like a rotten grapefruit and he came out and he got knocked down again and he started to stand up and it, you know if you raise your hands you can get hit and he was starting to pull his hands up and the ref went over to him and he said I want you to tell me your name the date and where we are or I'm stopping this fight now and Jose Torres said, my name is Jose Torres. Today is March 23rd, 1962. I'm in Madison Square Garden, and Emil Griffith is beating the shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> and you're going to see tonight, the, and, and this is going to the, it, it be the beginning of the toughest street fight in the history of American politics. You've seen what they've thrown at our guy for the last three weeks. And you are not going to believe what they start throwing at him now. The only way that we can defeat that is by talking neighbor to neighbor, on the telephones, knocking on the doors. And I know in this state when you knock on a door and someone doesn't like our guy, they slam the door in your face, they say things to you that no human should ever say to another. And I'm going to ask you now for the next three weeks, even when you get those doors slammed, even when you get those hang-ups on the phone, to continue calling, continue knocking. If you do what the field organizers have asked you to do, in three weeks, you will have changed this country. And when your children ask you where you were, and you say, I was at the headquarters, I went to the bars, I listened to the speeches, but more importantly, I walked the precincts, I knocked the doors, I made the calls, and I got all of my friends, all of my family, all of my neighbors to vote for change, to elect Barack Obama, President of the United States.
United States, and I helped change this country.